So we got a ten and a half heat pump Lennox. <laughs> Gotta love Lennox. Checking this out and there we are. We got 126 suction, 258 head pressure, a 2.3 degree superheat, and a half a degree of subcooling. I guess it's restriction or metering device day today. So that's definitely not a complete indicator of a low charge. This is going to tell me I've got an overcharge. And this is going to tell me I've got an undercharge. Subcooling on this unit, depending on what your indoor matchup is. And basically, it should be anywhere between 8 and 7 degrees on this thing pretty sure it's a TXV in it we'll check pretty positive so that superheat has dropped down as low as one and a half while I've been here it's probably have to check the return temperature he just turned it on in the house I came out here so we'll see what our return temperature is see how cold the return area is but I mean it's 78 outside right now so we got one telling me we're overcharged and one telling me we're undercharged so I'm gonna think we've got an expansion valve problem and I'm gonna turn this thing off real quick and we'll head under the house and uh see what's going on under there and i'll come back out and turn this on in a minute i want to kind of get a look at that coil under there and see what we've got going on i'm hesitant to do a leak search that appears to be a metering device problem to me but uh let's go see what we've got going on under the house we have got two heat pumps this end of the house heat pump is here there's another air handler back over there behind us so for whatever reason i thought this guy had dual fuel set up on this house i don't know anyway so we're under the house i turned the unit back on outside so we're still at a like a 1.8 super heat a 0.4 subcool on this thing we've got a 74 degree return so there should be plenty of heat getting pulled into this coil I've got a 55 supply so we've got a 19 degree split on it but I'm just not convinced that we've got a problem with a low charge went back out there and turned the outdoor unit back off let this thing blow a little bit the filters in the house are fine and this humidifier over there a metering device issue I just I mean what's that that one one and a half degree two degree superheat what's that gonna do if I start adding refrigerant to get an eight degree or a seven degree subcool it's gonna be zero it's gonna flood so 
Let's see what kind of metering device for sure that we have in here first. Make sure it actually is a TXD and not a piston. Sniff around in here a little bit. Need the leak detector. But I don't see any way whatsoever. Oh, this thing could need more refrigerant. Running a two degree superheat already. And like I said, you try to add refrigerant to get your sub cooling up. It's not going to do you any good because your superheat's not going to go up. It's going to stay the same or go to zero, more than likely. No Linux. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sniff around in here a little bit just to see if I pick up anything. But this one is a little easier to access than the other one I ran. So once I do all that, I'm gonna pop the sensing bulb off this thing. And then I'm gonna bring it out here. I'm gonna put my hand on it and warm it up and then we're going to cool it off and uh, see what happens with it all right got a leak detector ready i want you to stay here for the warm up time on it we'll see if we can we're going to get too detailed in it because i really don't think it is but I don't think this is under 10 years old. It may barely still have a part warranty on it if it was registered. I don't know. But you don't want to put a TXV in a coil if it has a leak in it. So, you just want to do a once over on it and see we're picking up anything trying not to get water on the tip of this thing I'm not getting anything yet Let's go to the back. A lot of times with a heat pump, you can switch that outdoor unit into heat real quick and warm this coil, build those pressures up in it. If you're looking for a small leak, it makes it a little easier to pick that up. Obviously, the higher the pressure and the higher the heat on the coil, the more it's going to leak, or the faster it'll leak. Just helps doing leak searches sometimes. And I'm not picking up even a sniff of anything in here. Not even in your usual 
places. I don't see any of the water beating. A lot of the times you'll never even register to one on here. So a lot of the times you'll see the water bead if you've got any oil or leaking around one of these, especially on the copper. It's a little easier to see. You'll see the water beading and stuff like that uh, where it gets a little oil on the surface. So I don't think there's a leak in this coil. Our problem is going to be our valve. I'm pretty positive. So I'm going to turn it back on. Then we're going to heat and cool this valve and uh, see what happens to it. All right, guys. So I've got my water over here. We're going to try this out. I've got the bulb out here. I'm holding it to the suction line right now. I'm just same as it would be in there. And we're running a one and a half degree superheat and a half a degree subcool. So, I'll take it out off the suction line. And I'll let it warm up to this temperature out here. It's about, the suction line is cold. Cold, cold. And now I'm gonna put my hand on it. See what happens. Absolutely nothing. So I know the palm of my hand is about 85 degrees. So it's not responding to any additional heat being added. We're still at one and a half degree. 1.6 superheat. 0.2 degrees subcooling. So it's not responding to any additional heat being added. This line's probably about 55, 56 degrees. My clamps are outside. I mean, it's cold, it's sweating. So for me to go from that cold pipe to my warm hand and get absolutely nothing in response, I'm guessing that when I stick this ice water on it, this suction pressure is going to drastically drop and that superheat's going to skyrocket a little bit. If it's doing one thing and not the other or either it's not doing either one of them. Absolutely nothing. So we're still at a two degree superheat right there, three. Subcooling went up. So now we're starting to see now we got that suction pressure. Nose diving. Superheat starting to go up. Subcooling staying the same, not doing anything. So, it wanted to shut down when it thought it was flooded, but for whatever reason, when you add heat to it, it's not wanting to open up. So, definitely an issue with this bulb. You add heat to it, it doesn't change anything, but it, it'll nosedive. One more thing I want to check. Kind of similar to the last one I was at. 
that video when you see it. I apologize for the air noise. The blower, I had to go off of that one while I was checking it. It was a case coil, so it was positive air and it was kind of blowing around. So hopefully I added enough subtitle to it. What I want to do real quick is stick my hand in here and see what kind of temperature we've got across this coil. Make sure we don't have a issue with a restricted coil. It is cold all the way across. That other one I did, that upflow train case coil, it was like half the coil, the bottom half of it was frosting and freezing. And the top half on each side was still warm as the air coming through it. So it was, basically I had a restricted coil. I didn't have refrigerant flow through the whole coil. Try not to hit that capacitor. It'll wake you up if you do. We got the same thing on the bottom. So I've got I've got refrigerant flow through this whole coil. So if that thing was like the back of it back there was frosting and freezing and real cold. Yeah, I put my hand up here and it's the same temperature as the air coming through it. It starts letting me know I've got an issue with the flow in the coil, not the metering device. It's typically the metering device. If it's a problem inside the metering device, it's gonna affect all your capillary tubes most of the time. And it will affect the complete flow or not flow to the coil. Once you've got warm spots on your coil, a lot of the times you've got a restriction in it. I mean, we don't have a charge problem. Pretty sure of that. My hand back on this thing. And it just won't respond. Now, I just had this thing in ice water. It's still cold. It balanced back out to one degree of superheat and 0.2 subcool. And the palm of my hand's got to be at least 85, 86 degrees. So it should be responding and opening up. And it's not doing that. So it's stuck somewhere in there. I'm just not making a full, full recovery from being cold and starting to shut down because it thinks it's flooded and then you put the heat back to it and it won't do anything so got a bad TXV in a Linux area and all that that's it for this one hope you guys enjoyed and uh, like subscribe appreciate you guys for watching and we'll see you on the other one